okay guys so the next chapter that we have to discuss today that is your chapter number 5 in your book that is source documents and coding so if you look at the learning outcomes of this chapter what we are going to discuss today is about coding what basically is coding what are the different types of codes do we have what are the documents required to buy and sell the products what are the documents required to record material cost to record labor cost and in the end the requirement of the sales income so in this chapter basically if you divide this chapter we have two different areas one is coding the other one is documents so first of all we will be talking about coding what basically coding is and why do you need actually coding and then we will be discussing about the documents that are required in order to buy the material sell the material record the material recording of the labor cost all of this we will be discussing today so quickly starting off with coding why do you think we need to code an item why there is a need to code an item right. to find the thing easily definitely you know coding a code is a unique reference if you if you want to ever define a code it is a unique reference now let's say you are manufacturing you are working in samsung you are in the department of samsung galaxy s4 and how many galaxy s4 would be manufactured in a day let's take an example 100 are they different from each other they have absolutely the same features with like each other so how would you distinguish between one of each one of them by different serial numbers and serial numbers are definitely the codes the way we code the product so definitely the features of the product is the same qualities is the same benefits is the same disadvantage are the same so in order to distinguish them from one product to the another product we are going to use codes so that is why it is known as a code is a unique reference unique means which does not have a sim, uh, which does not have the same thing with the other now let's say if my code is 001 so the other person will not be having a code as 001 because if you talk an example if you talk about an example in in a company the employees are given codes employee codes employee codes so each code is different from the other right so each code is different from the other so if we look at the definition of coding it says that a code is a system of words letters figures symbols used to represent something now definitely whenever we are using a code of something now let's say if i am using a code like 12 or 13 students are sitting in this class and i say okay your code is 001 so why will i give a code to someone to represent that person or to represent that thing the main purpose is of the representation that how you represent a person or a product in a company now when we talk about coding it does, there is no hard and fast rule that coding always has to be in numbers or always has to be in alphabets, alphabets. it can be numbers it can be only alphabets or it can be both. combination of both of them okay now it's one example is given over here that for financial accounting general ledger codes are used which correspond to the different areas of the statement of financial position and income statement this statement means that what's the process of making the financial statement first of all whatever transaction takes place you record them in your books of prime entries from books of prime entries those transaction move towards the ledgers ledgers means t accounts from t accounts those balances the ending balances move towards the trial balance and from trial balance they go on towards the respective places either balance sheet or income statement so this is the 
complete process. So when we are making the T accounts, every T account has a different code. Why? So that we can easily add in. Now, if you're working in a big company, very huge company, multinational company, they will be having a lot of T accounts. So how will you identify any one T account? With the help of a general ledger coding system. You code that T account. So whenever you want to identify that uh, identify that particular T account or a ledger in the ledger, so definitely you will use the code in order to find these kind of things. Right? So discussing about the types of coding. Now, when we discuss about the types of coding, we have five different types. The first one is sequential, which is came from the word sequence. Now, if you have 13 people sitting over here, I might code you without any logical order. 001, 002, 003, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. Right? So, whenever you code anything without any logical order, it's just a sequence, ascending numbers from 1 to 99, 98, 97. It's called sequential coding. Right? The next one we have is a block coding block now what usually happens in block coding is this that in block coding the first digit or the first alphabet that we have will be representing some class will be representing some category now how just look over here let's say these are the codes Okay, so it's A000, A001, A002, L001, L002. So A represents assets, L represents liability, right? So the first digit, it can be a digit, it can be an alphabet, right? So the first digit or the first alphabet will be representing some logical thing. It can be asset, it can be liability, it can be if you are let's say working in a uh, company like Samsung, so it can be like sometimes LED TVs, sometimes mobile phones, washing machines, irons, so different products they have, so they can code that the sequence, it will be a combination of logical and illogical order, combination of both. What is the logical order? The first alphabet because it is representing some class. And after that, the second part of the code will be a sequential order. Like A001, asset 001, asset 002, asset 003. That is your block coding. Faceted codings. Faceted codings are the advanced version of block codings. You can say the refinement of block coding. Now, let's say over here. I have three numbers I have one two three so this is the complete code one two three now if my first digit is one it will represent asset if my first digit is two it will represent liability if my first digit is three, three it will represent equity so my first digit is one what will what is this asset, asset. Clear up till here? Now moving on towards the second digit. If my second digit is 1, it will represent non-current asset. If my second digit is 2, it will represent current asset. So if my it is 1, it will represent asset. If it is after 1, it means that every digit will be representing some logical order. Every digit. Now let's say over here in class. I want to distinguish between you guys. How will I do that? Okay. Your code is 1, 2. 1, 2. If the first digit of the code is 1, then you are a male. If first digit of the code is 2, then you are a female. Right? So I might code you 1, 2. So if your second digit is 1, then you are a, stated, uh, then you are a student of ACCA. 
If your second digit is 2, then you are a student of FIA. If your second digit is 3, then you are a student of SEMA. So this is how faceted codes are there. It represent each number represent a code. Each number represents something in the code. The four it can be alphabets as well. Now, the fourth one is hierarchical. What is a hierarchy? Sorry? Level, you can say. Hierarchy is a level. That uh, you can say, first comes your grandfather, then comes your father, then comes you, and then your children. So that's a complete hierarchy. Right? And even in organization, first come the chairman, then come the CEO, then come the MD, then come the general manager, then the departmental heads and then the supervisor. So that's a hierarchy. Now, if I say like this, let's suppose if I write only three, so that will be, you can say nails, nuts and bolts, you can say nails. Okay. If I write 3, 1. So you can say round headed nails. Right? Round headed nails. If I write 3, 2. So you can say flat flat headed nails. Right? Now from 3 I went to 3, 1 or 3, 2. Now from 3, 1, I am further classifying in round headed nails. So let's say I am saying if it is 3, 1, 1, it is steel round headed nails. Right? If I am writing 3, 1, 2, so it might be let's say plastic round headed nails so this is how a hierarchical uh, no it's 3 1 so 3 1 is round ok so this is how you identify the codes if they are a hierarchical codes there will be a hierarchy first code then two codes then three codes further subdivided it will be and the last one that we have is the Mnemonic. Yeah. You can, you can, like, like uh, you can look, uh, you can use, but uh, for letters, the best type of coding is mnemonic. How many of you remember the mnemonic accurate? We discussed the mnemonic accurate in our first chapter that for each letter of accurate we have the qualities of good management information right so that was a mnemonic for let's say if uh, i have one mnemonic say fia so isn't it a mnemonic foundations in accountancy if i have a mnemonic acca association of chartered certified accountant right so that's a mnemonic that each letter will be representing one complete word so that's called mnemonic so sequential a sequence is there any logical order no logical order block first digit or first alphabet will be representing something and rest part of the code will be sequence okay face it it every alphabet every letter every number will be representing some meaning some logical thing hierarchical it will be a hierarchy division of subdivide subdivision right and in the end we have mnemonic mnemonic what we have discussed a lot in our first chapter as well that every alphabet will be representing some complete word okay now we talk about documents right we talk about documentation that how does a documentation takes place so, you need to understand one thing and that is material control cycle. How do we purchase material in an organization? 
there is a complete cycle for that now i'll present to you a scenario and you have to understand that okay two departments are there stores department and purchase department and the third department comes in that is production department the production department is saying to you please give us some raw material so that we can continue with the production you say okay fine you can have the material you are the stores manager right so three managers are there stores manager production manager and purchase manager or procurement manager purchase is also known as procurement so production manager is in conversation with the stores manager so he saying to the stores manager we need to continue with the production so we need some material so the stores manager says okay fine you can have the material after some point the stores manager says that we are running out of material we don't have enough material to provide you to continue with the production so stores manager will go to the purchase manager or the procurement manager he will say to the purchase manager or the procurement manager that mr abc we are running out of the stock so please find a suitable supplier and place an order to buy some new material from the supplier so they will start searching the supplier we found one supplier and then they will give them the order the order is placed and then order will be received where in stores the in the stores department so that's this is the complete scenario now look over here how the things work so the first thing that we discussed the stores manager will come to the purchase manager that we are running out of material please make an order please purchase some more goods so the document they will send to the purchase department will be purchase requisition purchase requisition means that you will request them to purchase some more goods purchase some more material that document is known as purchase requisition and what will be the route of purchase requisition from stores to purchase department that's your first document purchase requisition so purchase requisition is the document that is sent by the stores to the purchase department in order to request them to buy more material after that what the purchase department is doing they are finding the different suppliers they are finding the different supplier so in between purchase requisition and ordering of goods there will be one document known as quotation now what basically quotation is you find different suppliers every supplier will be giving their proposal to you that okay this is our quotation this this is what we quote quotation means to quote so they will quote different prices some might say 10 dollars per unit some might say 8 dollars per unit some might say 9 dollars per unit so you will find the best price with best quality best price with best quality and what what you will do you will accept the quotation what you will do the purchase department will accept the quotation okay fine they accepted the quotation after accepting the quotation what they will be doing they will be ordering the goods they will place an order so the document which will go from purchase department to the supplier will be known as purchase order it will be known as purchase order here we will use purchase order okay so the document that we will be using is that purchase order now we made the order we are waiting for 
goods to be delivered we are waiting so after one month the delivery person of whom supplier or, pur uh, or the pur uh, purchaser purchaser delivery person of supplier because supplier will deliver the goods at your premises right so supplier sent a delivery person to deliver the goods at your premises at your department which department stores, stores department. department stores department because goods will be received in stores not in purchase department okay so we receive the goods in stores right we receive the goods in the store and the delivery person will be bringing a document known as delivery note and he will be having two copies of that he will be having two copies of that and he will make both the copies signed by the purchaser by the customer that okay you have received the goods the goods have been delivered to you so he will take one copy back with him and rip, uh, give the one copy to the purchaser so now the scenario of dealing with the supplier is finished finished sorry yeah that that we will be talking about right now now your goods have been delivered right now whatever documents that you will be raising will be your internal documents okay internal documents the first document that you will raise is the goods received note also known as so when you are storing your raw material GRM goods received note also known as goods uh, GRM goods received note so this note you will raise to check whether the goods that you have ordered are the same goods and are of same quality at the same price or not if everything is fine you will raise a document name known as goods received note which will say that you have received the proper goods okay after receiving the good after receiving the goods you sign the delivery note the delivery note is sent back to the supplier supplier will send you what have you made the payment invoice, invoice. they will send you the invoice purchase invoice invoice means whatever you have bought the bill of that that these are the goods that you have bought from us so this is the bill whenever the company will be paying which department will make the payment accounts department accounts department the payment will also be always be made by the accounts department whether it's payment to employees payment to supplier payment of non current asset every payment will be made by the accounts department okay so when the payment will be made will they just make a payment they will verify the invoice so when they will be verifying the invoice they will verify it by two documents two documents one is the purchase order the other is the goods received note so purchase order will tell them that what goods were ordered and goods received note but will tell them what goods were received if both will say both will be same both will reconcile they will make the payment it's fine everything is fine that depends from company to company it should be the transfer the order the receipt from the hostel it should be automatically transferred to the airline. yeah definitely that depends from company to the company that what are the, their internal procedures so that we are not going into detail of that we are just looking the overview of the general practices being practiced by the company right so now you have the good receive note everything is fine you make the payment payment is made made the chapter of supplier is closed now again the same thing now you have the goods again the production manager is coming to you the, to the stores department that please issue us some 
goods we need to make the products issue us some raw material so that we can make the product we can continue with the production so the material when the material will be issued so the document that will be sent by the production department to the stores department will be material requisition okay so the document that will be that we will uh, that the store uh, that the production department will send to the store department will be material requisition now guys don't ever confuse yourself with purchase requisition and material requisition purchase requisition is a different thing and material requisition is a different thing purchase requisition means that you request you request your purchase department to buy the goods from outside the company and material requisition is your production department is talking to the stores department please send them some send us some goods so that we can continue with the production two different things don't confuse them now let's say they require 1000 kg of raw material and you have provided them 100000 1100 okay so what they will do they will return the 100 right so the document when they will be using the, when they will be returning the goods when they will be returning the raw material is material returned note now let's say they are not returning to the stores they are transferring from one job to the another job so what document will they use material transfer note okay so these are very small small documents now when the material will be issued goods will be manufactured so you can say that material issued we manufacture the goods and then we sell the goods to the third customer of the organization right so these are the documents that we have discussed so far so what is the purchase requisition guys you ask your purchase department to buy some more raw material some more goods and after that they see the quotation or the estimate of different supplier that what is the price they are offering and what is the quality they are offering then after agreeing to any one supplier they make the purchase order after purchase order the invoice come in comes in okay we pay the invoice everything is finalized now material requisition stores department is issuing the goods to the production after they sends the material requisition some of the material is returned so they use material return note some of the material is transferred from one department to the another department you use material transfer note when the goods are being dispatched they send you a dispatch note that we have dispatched the goods from our premises it will be delivered to you in one day or two days like delivery note sorry like in amazon definitely when you buy it online as well delivery note when the goods are delivered the delivery person will bring a delivery note which will be signed by the customer that okay yes we the goods are being delivered and in the end with the help of the delivery note you will be raising the goods received note that okay the goods that we have received are fine enough now there are two things bin cards and stores ledger account the movement in the inventory now we have seen that how much movement we can have in inventory goods coming in goods going out goods issued to production goods returned goods transferred how much movement is there in the inventory a lot of movement right so there are two accounts which take the record of the inventory and two accounts are there named as bin cards or stores ledger account both do the same function no difference in bin cards and stores ledger account the only difference that we have is that in bin cards we only record the quantity only quantity so as they say that bin cards are manual record that are written up and kept in stores 
so whenever the it will be kept in stores it will only record the quantity that how much quantity is coming in going out that is only recorded in bin cards whereas in stores ledger account we record the quantity as well as the price price or you can say the amount so both the things are there in stores ledger account record cost details so that the unit cost and total cost of each issue and receipt is shown when you will be shown the cost when you have the amount in the account so a stores ledger account will keep the record of quantity as well as amount or the value whereas in bin cards we will only record the quantity only the quantity so you guys know what is material requisition i am not going into the detail of that free inventory there is one formula to calculate free inventory how do you calculate free inventory what is meant by free inventory first of all Okay, to some extent you are absolutely right. Basically, free inventory means the inventory on which is not being issued to any of the order. Free, it's free. It can be issued to anyone, any new order. You can say. So, how do we calculate it? Inventory on hand. How much do we have right now? Plus inventory on order. How much we have new ordered? Minus scheduled for. use so i'll give you one example 13 students are here right we have five books of ma1 right and we have ordered 25 more so let's say five are here right now 25 more are coming so how many total do we have 30 30 and 15 students are here in the class so that is scheduled for use the out of 30 15 are for you guys isn't it yes. so how much is the remaining free inventory 15. the remaining 15 so i will say that five i have right now plus 25 are more coming so the total that i will have will be 30 but 15 are for the current batch that is being running so 15 will be issued to you guys and the remaining 15 will be considered as free inventory clear okay labor documents what are the labor documents when you talk about a labor a low level working labor so definitely they are being paid on the basis of number of hours right and the best way to record the number of hours are clock cards job cards and time sheets clock cards job cards and time sheets a very small difference is there in each three of them clock cards are you can say the electronic cards so you might have seen that whenever an employee whenever an employee enters an organization he swipes the cards and the door gets open right whereas time sheets you can say are manual which is manually filled up by the employees that this is my time in this is my time out so both do the same kind of work which tells you that how much time the employee is investing or how much time the employee is spending in the organization or in the work what he is doing there is job card are specific to any of the job so let's say i am working on a particular job that is construction of a building so that job card will tell me how much time an employee a has spent on this particular job so the main purpose of each three of them is the same to calculate the time that labor is spending in the organization on the work he is doing so that we can calculate his pay because as we have discussed that the hourly paid workers or the laborers that are the low level laborers are usually paid on the hourly. hourly basis so you need to have the number of hours that they have worked so that you can pay to them according to that what about the rate hours we can get from the time sheets from the clock cards from the job cards what about the rate no rate you can uh, you can you have a different rate every time so how how what about rate why where and from where do we get the rate time from job no 
where do we get the rate from it's basically agreed with the labor when he is hired in the organization so that you can get from the contract that is being signed by the labor so they will say that your rate is dollar 100 per hour dollar 50 per hour dollar 20 per hour and that then the number of hours can vary but the rate will remain same okay then we have the other statement which says that job cards and time sheets should be authorized by a manager why there is a need for authorization that a manager should authorize yes these times are correct why there is a need for authorization exactly that you that if uh, let's say i am a dishonest person instead of writing 9 am in the morning i am writing 8 am so i am coming at 9 i am writing 8 am so i will be getting some extra amount for the hour that i have not worked and that is a loss on the side of the company so company wants to pay the exact amount that is deserved by the employee or the labor so for that they need proper authorization okay yes this guy has worked this much and the manager is authorizing yes this is absolutely correct these the number of hours that he has worked is absolutely correct so we need proper authorization so that we can have if you guys remember control over the transactions okay pay slips pay slips are basically the slips you get the sheet you get for the salary that how much salary is there how much reduction is there all of those things right and total payroll is the record of all the employees working in the organization and in a payroll you will have all the details about the employee the contact details address details date of birth name surname all of those things plus the coding of the like if you say in a in a college the students are awarded or given a particular code if you enter the code in the system all of the details of the students comes on the system that this is the name this is the surname this is the picture date of birth what courses he are studying in all of those things the same is the case with the payroll like a roll number. definitely like a roll number okay the last topic that we have in this chapter is sales income basically sales income a very small topic is there so you guys know that whenever we make a sale whenever we make a sale the double entry that we record for sale is receivables debit or bank debit against sales credit so what basically is sales for us what basically sales is for us sales is a income sales is income so going back to the first class when we discussed the concept of double entry accounting when your income increases what is that debit or credit that is a credit so sales is your income and when your income increase it is credited now you will be making sales either on credit or on cash so if you are making a cash sale what will you get cash definitely so cash is what for the company Bank. asset yeah. cash is an asset for the company so when your asset goes up that is Bank. debited or bank is debited but when you make sale on credit have you received the amount no, no. so you will record what receivable, receivable. okay you will re record debtors or receivable okay so both are the same things so this is the double entry that we record for the sales income and sales basically could be analyzed as we have discussed that we have different kind of departmentation in the organization so sales could be according to your product that you have different different sales for different different products like in unilever or you can say like in samsung they have different products they have samsung tablets they have samsung mobile phones they have samsung washing machines they have samsung microwave ovens so according to the different products they will be recording sales okay this is the sale for microwaves this is a sale for mobile phones this is a sales for tablets this is a sales for computers this is a sales for laptops different different or you can have sales by different area this is a sales of let's say england this is a sales of ireland this is a sales of any other country of the world wherever you have the function 
department you can have the department as well the sales income by the department different departments are there in the organization or different division division is basically the same thing having in the like like in one country you have different different divisions the south division north division east division west divisions right so you dip, uh, you segregate your sales on the basis of the different divisions in the organization so why do we need to code the sales because sales is the major source of income in the organization if your sales will be distorted all of your income statement will be distorted okay so sales income code that properly so what we have discussed so far in the this course the coding system why do we need to code it's to have a unique reference to each of the product that we manufacture what kind of uh, coding we have sequential block codes hierarchical faceted mnemonic right five types of coding we have then we discuss about the documents related to material in which we have purchase requisition then we have quotation then we have purchase order purchase invoice delivery note good received note then we have material requisition material return note material transfer note okay after that we discuss about the stores ledger account we discuss about the bin cards right we discuss about the free inventory the inventory that is available for the orders to be taken then we discuss about the labor labors are normally paid on hourly basis so we use time sheets for that we use clock cards for that we use job cards for that right in the end the labors or the employees are given the pay slips which includes all of their salary any deduction as well and the whole system is known as the payroll system and in the end we had the documentation or the coding related to the sales income and how we can segregate our sales on the basis of product area department and division so that is it from your chapter number 5 and you guys can have a break and after the break we will be discussing about the so questions the question. yeah uh, so what do we do with the free inventory what do we do with the free inventory yeah. basically the purpose of having free inventory is that on that free inventory you can take more orders right so if you let's say you are having an order of 10000 units and your free inventory is 8000 units so then it will come to your mind that 8000 we already have we need to make 2000 more so free inventory as i said in my lecture that free inventory is basically for to get the more orders on that okay because obviously you will not need any inventory to just stay in the warehouse you need to take orders on that you need to sell that inventory okay thank you very much guys